This is Tar Heel Talk, an in-depth look at the issues and people making news in North Carolina. Here's your host, Sonia Williams. Today's tweens and teens have many issues to deal with, from social media and bullying to body image, grades, and relationships. And to my guests today have written a book that addresses all of these issues. It's entitled Snapshot. And joining me now is the father-daughter duo who wrote the book, Marcus and Hannah Harris. Thank you both so much for being with us. Thanks for having us. Appreciate it. Now, your book, Snapshot, addresses, like I said, many issues that our tweens and teens will face throughout life today. Talk a little bit about um, how you came up with the topics for this book and, and how the whole book all came about. Okay. The book came about because I challenged Hannah each week to a series of weekly goals. And these goals span a variety of different topics. So I'll have her complete something artistic, I'll have her research something spiritual, or I'll have her read up on some cultural history, just different things to help her expand her knowledge base outside of what she usually gets in school. And so one week I had her write four poems about modern day teen life. And the poems she came back with were really good. They really surprised me how good they are. So to prove it was no fluke, I said, well, go back and write three more this week. So she wrote three more that were better than the first four. So it was at that point I said, well, you know what? These were too good not to share. So if you write some more, I'll publish them for you in a book format through my company, and we can share it with your family and friends and other people. So that's where the origins of the book came from. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about some of the topics that you address, Hannah, because you do an amazing job of, of painting life for tweens and teens today. Talk a little bit about some of those topics. Well, I know some of the topics were racism and gentrification and just different things that are going on in our community and people don't really like to talk about them. So I wanted to make sure that the teens that are going through it know that they have somebody that can connect with them and relate to them and know, let them know that they're not really alone in whatever it is that they're going through. And yeah. Just want to address the topics people don't really address often. And that's extremely important um, when you talk about dealing socially with tweens and teens today is, is addressing those social issues that aren't exactly easy to talk about. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. So talk a little bit from a dad's perspective about how important it was for you to help guide her and address some of these social issues. So Hannah and I have a great relationship. We, we're very open and communicative with each other. So we have no problem talking about things, but we do know there are teens out there who don't have that outlet. And she wanted to help them be able to express themselves in ways that were genuine and authentic, that were pertinent to the issues they deal with today. And so I guided her through the process of expressing herself mm -hmm. in a way in which others could relate, like she just said. Mm -hmm. And that would help them be able to express themselves about things they may not be comfortable talking about uh, or don't have someone they can talk to about those things. Right. And expressing yourself, I can imagine, Hannah, through the written word can be extremely um, freeing. So talk a little bit about some of your favorite pieces. Uh, I like, I really like My America, because me and my dad worked on that one together. I, um, he told me to write a couple more poems for the book. It was in the last stages of writing it. Mm -hmm. and so. I, I wrote basically the guideline and then he made a couple edits and the finishing product. I really like that one. Okay. So My America, tell us a little bit about the details of that piece. It's, My America is about basically everything that's been going on in the country today and it's from a teen's perspective and it's basically, it's a teen, it's a teen's perspective on how the country will affect them as they go older in their lives. Mm -hmm. And that's important, Marcus, because, you know, it's not only just getting our teens aware of our political climate, but just being involved in social aspects as well. Right. And some teens may not think that the different political and cultural issues are going to affect them, like the school to prison pipeline or like police mm -hmm. brutality, but these are issues that they need to be prepared for, the ones who haven't experienced them already. And so it was important for us to put those types of topics in the book 
in case there were some who weren't really aware of how serious these problems can be. Right. And when you talk about the severity of these problems, and especially when we talk about the prison to pipeline um, stream, that is something that I know that, especially in the African American community, is concerning. How do you address that issue in the book? So in the book, we have a poem called Pipeline. And that poem, from beginning to end, addresses every aspect of that issue, from the fact that a lot of the uh, problems stem from kids who are just hungry, and then that affects their attention span during the day, and then they can't concentrate on their work, then they get bad grades, and they get suspended. And so it's kind of like a domino effect of just cascading things that lead to the end, which could be incarceration or sometimes the grave. Right. And that is so important to address because, like you're saying, it, it happens so often in the African-American community and in low-income communities as well, not just African-American, but it's something that it's important to address. Right. Mm -hmm. So, Hannah, when you look at this project that you've worked on with your dad, what has been some of the, the highlights of, of the book for you? I think some of the highlights, the main one is how close we've gotten through writing this book together because we've, he didn't know that I knew most of the stuff that I did. <laughs> so when he saw that I knew more things than he thought I did at first, it brought us closer because we could talk about more together. And yeah, this book has just really brought us closer in our relationship. You brought up an excellent point um, because you, you do highlight some very poignant issues that I think a lot of parents probably don't realize that their tweens and teens know about. So talk a little bit about some of those issues that, that kids are talking about that their parents might not necessarily know that they're talking about. Well, like I said, like I said before, like gentrification, like downtown Durham with all the new buildings going up mm -hmm. and racism has been present and it's, it's been present for a while and it's probably not going to go away anytime right. soon. Right. And mass incarceration and the school to prison pipeline, like he stated, just things that we see happening, but sometimes we just don't know what it's called. So when we explain it to our parents, they explain it more in detail. They give us more details and then they give us a name for it and then we can converse about it. Right. And so those are some very heavy topics Marcus, that our, our children know about and that parents need to know that they know about and can be able to have that conversation with them about it. Yeah, and one more topic she didn't mention was sex, which of course, mm -hmm. as a parent, I don't want to have this conversation until she's 25. Absolutely. <laughs> but this <laughs> or is an issue. even later. Right, exactly, mm -hmm. maybe at all. But this is an issue younger and younger kids are dealing with and being exposed to, and so we, have to, we can't bury our heads about that. We have to be able to talk to them about that and make them feel comfortable talking to us about that. Right. How can people find out more information about the book and the work that you all are doing? So the book's available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, in ebook and in print, uh, various uh, websites, but MarcusJHarris.com is my personal website, mm -hmm. and MarcusHarrisFoundation.org is the new nonprofit I started. Absolutely, and we'll talk more about that in just a minute. We're going to take a break. We'll continue this conversation in just a moment. Okay. We'll be back with more Tart Hill Talk after these messages. We're talking today about the book Snapshot. It's a book of poetry that addresses many of the issues that tweens and teens are facing today. Things like social media, friendships, relationships, and more. And with us again are the authors of this book, father and daughter duo, Marcus and Hannah Harris. Thank you again for being with us. Thanks a lot for being here. Now, Marcus, you also have a nonprofit organization, a foundation that works with youth and their families. Tell us a little bit about your family. Foundation. So I have volunteered almost my whole adult life in various capacities. I've volunteered for homeless shelters, Meals on Wheels, uh, taking food to people who couldn't food, uh, feed themselves. Mm -hmm. And so I got to the point where I wanted to do more, but I only had so much time myself to give. So a friend of mine suggested starting a foundation that would encompass a lot of different things and help people in different ways. And so a couple of years ago, we got the idea. We just formed it in uh, March of this year. Mm -hmm. But we offer everything from scholarship programs to an annual toy drive for kids who are fleeing abusive homes. We just started a community engagement series where we're addressing topics like mass incarceration, bail reform, 
and we're holding film screenings and panel discussions. So we do a variety of different things just to help spread the word about different issues. And it's important for you to include your daughter in this mission and, and the work that you're doing just to, to demonstrate how, it, how important it is to give back to the community and to help others. Yes, ma'am. She's come with me on Meals on Wheels routes. She's come with me volunteering different places. So she's been exposed to it. Mm -hmm. And Hannah, what has that experience been like for you? I've, I didn't really like the idea of volunteering at first because mm -hmm. I just thought it was boring. But then he exposed me to it and I got to know some of the people that were also volunteering there and it just became a lot of fun for me because knowing I could have fun and still help people at the same time was a good experience. Right. And that's important, just giving back and, and just sharing a little bit of what you have with others, I can imagine it can be um, life changing for you as well. Yeah. So when you look at, um, when we talk a little bit more about your book, because like I said, you address a number of very serious topics that children, teens and tweens are facing today. What are some of the issues that you think are important for parents to know that, that our youth are struggling with? Well, mainly, like my dad said, sex probably, because mm -hmm. there are a lot of things that happen at school that parents don't know about and the kids won't tell them because they don't want the parents to know about right. it. Mm -hmm. So the, I think the kids, I think the parents should just, they shouldn't have a talk with them too early, but they should at least ask them if they've been exposed to it sometimes. Right. And be willing to have that conversation. I know there's a poem in the book called Kidulthood. Yes, ma'am. Talk a little bit about that, Marcus, and, and the message that that sends, because I, when I read it, I thought that was a powerful, powerful poem. Right, the poem is actually about how children, especially nowadays, are very old natured in a, in a young way. Mm -hmm. And it arose from my parenting experience from Hannah and learning about the various things they deal with, even in elementary school, that I had no idea. Right. Things like sex or things like experimentation with drugs or alcohol that kids my age when I was younger never even thought about. And so we wanted to convey the idea of kids, and that's actually a, a sociological term, kid adulthood, mm -hmm. where actual uh, maturity doesn't take place until 25, but we wanted to show that they actually go through these experiences much younger than that, right. which mature them a lot faster. So that's the purpose of that poem, to mm -hmm. show parents the various things your kids are involved in, even if you don't know. Right. And like I said, that was a very powerful poem to me, you know, just talking about the different stages. You know, you're saying, you, you say we're not adults, but right. we're exposed to X, Y, and Z. You know, there were a number of things in that poem that I, I think that a lot of parents don't realize that their kids are exposed to at such an early age. Hannah, talk a little bit about some of those things that are addressed in that poem. Well, some of the things are like experiments with marijuana and mm -hmm. sex, like in the bathrooms at school, and like walking down the hallway and just smelling weed as soon as you enter the school. Um, and most of the times, the teachers know about it, but they don't really say anything about it. So the kids just think it's okay, and nobody really stops them, which in turn leads to the school to prison pipeline. Right. So. Anything. And you're in middle school right now, mm -hmm. about to head to high school. But those are things, Marcus, that we as parents just can't even fathom our kids being exposed to. But it is a reality check for all of us. Right. And as parents, it grows you up even more, too, because mm -hmm. like we said before, you don't think you're going to talk to your kids about that at 10 or at 12. Right. But you have to be able to shift your parental game to be able to handle that well, with them, mm -hmm. even when you're not ready to. Right. Yeah. And some difficult conversations. But when right. you look at the overall theme of this book and the importance of, of the message, what, what do you want people to take away from their experience? Having read your poems, um, what do you want them to take away from this? The main thing that we like uh, teens especially to see is themselves. And we wanted to present a very authentic, genuine picture of modern day teen life mm -hmm. across the wide variety of spectrum that they, the things they deal with. So if we can get kids and teens to look at this book and say, yeah, that's me, or yeah, that's somebody I know, then we feel like we've done our job with it. Right. And Hannah, one thing that you said a little earlier in the show is that you want teenagers to feel like, or to know that they're not alone. Talk a little bit more about that and, and just how important that is um, in the message that you're trying to send. Yeah, because most, most of the time, teenagers are going through different things and different situations and they feel like they can't talk to anybody because maybe some of their friends aren't going through the same things they are 
or they feel like their friends have different problems to deal with so they can't really talk to them about it. So when we wrote this book, I wanted to make sure that teens know that they aren't alone and that there are people that are going through the same things as them so that they can relate to it. They can relate to it and hopefully that will help them deal with their situation mm -hmm. a little better. And having that support and just knowing, Marcus, that they're not alone can be incredibly important, not just for the teens, but for their parents as well. Yes, uh, it's very important to the kids that they understand that somebody can at least relate to them, even if you can't fix their problems, even if you can't make the problems go away. As long as they can relate to someone, what they're going through, it makes a world of a difference to them. Mm -hmm. How can people find out more information about the book and about the work that you all are doing in the community? So the book is available on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. Uh, major retail sites. It's also available through our website, MarcusJHarris.com. And more information about my work in the community is on MarcusHarrisFoundation.org. Okay, excellent. We'll take a break and we'll talk more in just a minute. All right. Don't go away. Tar Heel Talk will continue after these messages. Welcome back to Tar Heel Talk. I'm Sonia Williams. Today's show focuses on the book Snapshot. It's a book of poetry that addresses many of the issues that tweens and teens are facing today. Things like social media, friendships and relationships, grades and more. And with us again are the authors of this book, father-daughter duo Marcus and Hannah Harris. Thank you again for being with us. Thanks for having us. Now the book Snapshot that you've written addresses a lot, like I said, a lot of issues that our teens are facing today. Things that some parents may not even realize. Um, and, and it's important to, to bring these issues to the forefront, one, for our teens to know that they're not alone, and then also for our parents to know that our teens are even dealing with it. So with all that being said, is this a book for our teenagers, or is it a book for our parents, or both? Both. Definitely both. Mm -hmm. I'm 43, she's 14, so we were able to identify the things that they're going through, and then she actually helped me understand that a lot better as we explored that. So yeah, it's definitely for teens to see themselves and for adults to see teens as they are. Right. And like I said, you address a lot of issues um, from social media, body image, bullying, to politics. And, and Hannah, I know that you have a poem that you want to recite for us. So let's, let's hear it. You, you can tell us what it is, and then we'll let you recite it. <clears throat> okay, so the poem is My America, and I mentioned it earlier in the show. Mm -hmm. um, it's about, it's a teen's perspective of the country and the state of the country today and how it will be when they grow older. Okay. So. Let's hear it. All right. The days get longer as his term gets shorter. He's made life harder for those who've crossed the border. His election was a gift from the tax cut ferry to CEOs who will soon pay less than their secretaries to cut your coverage and boost his wealth. He lied to get your vote at the expense of your health. In Arizona, black and brown lives are crushed by deputies of a sheriff he pardoned for abusing detainees. In Virginia, racism marched with his head held high, and when it ran over peace, he praised hate side. And in Puerto Rico, a massive hurricane hit, left 1,000 dead, which he complained hurt the budget. As a soon-to-be citizen, I deserve to know the truth. Will this country die before I do? Wow. That is amazing. That is amazing. And it's called My, My America. America. Wow. And you addressed a lot of issues in that one poem. And, and Marcus, that is, that's your goal, is to raise a child who is politically aware of the climate that we're living in. Politically aware and also equipped with solutions to deal with it. Mm -hmm. That's the important thing. Right. And when you look at that and you look at this book, um, not just that one poem, but the entire book and all of the issues that are addressed, what do you want, what, what message do you want to share with other parents about, um, about the importance of the things that are being raised and, and concerns of, that our teens are addressing? Right, just understand that the parents aren't the only ones struggling with these issues. Their kids are struggling with the issues too. And to help their kids be able to develop the necessary coping skills um, and other skill sets necessary to deal with this, even at that young age. Mm -hmm. 
because then as they progress into adulthood, they'll be more accustomed to dealing with it and be more uh, better suited for it later. Right. Now, Hannah, when you wrote this poem, what was going through your mind? What were some of the things that you were thinking about as you wrote it? I have been, um, I've been thinking about this stuff a lot this week because my dad, when we were writing the book, he, would, he still does, but he would tell me about different current events that were going on like through, throughout the whole week or throughout the month if we missed some stuff. And I was just thinking about all the different events. And it was, I was just, it was going through my mind and I started writing. And I said, what, what if this country is, is over before I even get a chance to really live in it? Mm. And so I started thinking about it and I just started including all the stuff that he had told me in the poem. And then that last line was what I thought before I started writing it. Right. Extremely powerful. Yeah. And um, you raise a lot of concerns, a lot of issues that I think most adults don't know that our teenagers are thinking about. Right. Why is that so important? It's important because the teens need to know that these are issues, whether they are engaged with them or not, are going to affect them. And so if they're not prepared for it, it's going to put them back a lot further than if they were working towards uh, figuring out ways they can work their way through it. And so it's important to get teens engaged politically, culturally, socially at a much younger age now because we're living in the age of information and exposure to so many things and they just have to be able to deal with these things. Mm -hmm. There are so many issues that are addressed in the book I mean, and we can't get to all of them, but Hannah, as you were writing the poems, talk a little bit about um, what was your experience on a daily basis when it comes to your experience in school and some of your peers? Uh, some of the things that were addressed <laughs> in adulthood, mm -hmm. like I think it was the first stanza, um, some of those things happened in elementary school and some of them have happened and are still happening in middle school. Okay. And what I'm are sure some of those things um, for, for those of us who have not read um, adulthood? Uh, like kids being exposed to um, like marijuana, like walking down the hallway and just mm -hmm. smelling weed by somebody's locker. Or in the first stanza when I was in elementary school, <laughs> this boy had went in the bathroom and he came back out and told me to smell his finger. Mm. So that was addressed. And right. so you're talking about marijuana, sex, that kind of thing. Yeah, um, alcohol, and that's right. all in elementary school, yeah, which school. as a parent, right will blow my mind, um, yeah. but it's something that is important for us all to know that mm -hmm. it, it's happening right. so that we can address it. Right. What are some of the other things that you want, um, particularly teenagers and other tweens, to, to take away from, from this book of poetry? Uh, like I stated earlier in the show, that just to know that they're not alone mm -hmm. in whatever it is that they're going through and that there's always somebody out there that can relate to them and I just want them to know that um, they can connect with someone else that could be halfway across the world or halfway across the country without even knowing about it. Right. And Marcus, how can people find out more information about the book and about the community work that you and your family are doing? So more information about the book can be found on Amazon or Barnes & Noble, uh, iBooks, Google Play, other major retailers, as well as on MarcusJHarris.com, which is my personal website. And more information about our work in the community is at MarcusHarrisFoundation.org. Okay. I want to give you, um, we have about a minute left in the program, I want to give you the last word. What do you want people to take away from, from reading this book? Very powerful poems um, that talk about a lot of serious issues. What do you want people to take away from, from reading this book? I would say that though it may seem like it, the world's not going to end. We're all in this together. And so if we find a way to work together and find some common ground, we can address all the various issues. This, whether we're from different backgrounds or have different experiences, there's a unifying uh, message in this book. We all go through different things, but we all go through them together. Absolutely. Excellent yeah. advice. Marcus and Hannah Harris, thank you both so much for, for sharing your work, and thank you for being our guest today. Thanks a lot. I appreciate right. it. That's it for this week's Tar Heel Talk. To comment on this or other episodes of the show, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, or send us an email to tarheeltalk at fox50.com. I'm Sonya Williams. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again next week.